you motherfuckers didn't think I was going to do another one. You all thought I was a one and done type chump. Guess what, bitches? I don't have a job and I have all the downtime in the fucking world. I am unemployed in Australia, but it's fun. I like it. It's sunny outside. I get to be outside and do whatever the fuck I want. So fuck it. This is the second episode and being that it's still brought to you by absolutely fucking nobody. But being that I'm full of fiery spite and internal rage, I'm going to give full credit this episode to the Chinese government. And if you don't know why I hate the Chinese government and why they make me so fucking angry, listen to the first podcast and you'll understand why I want to call this podcast the white monkey podcast. But I thought about it and I feel like it would bring on a world of hate that I don't need in my fucking life at this point. So I am now raining down as supreme white monkey. If anyone has a problem with that, fuck yourselves. And if you're a fan and you want to let me know about it, pick whatever color you want and be that color monkey. You does, this isn't a race thing, even though they were kind of being racist towards me. But being a white guy, I, I can't complain. I guess I got to I got to take one once in a while. So if you want to be a fan, just pick whatever your favorite color is. You could be a black dude and be yellow monkey. You could be an Asian person and be rainbow monkey. I don't give two shits because, you know, because we're all monkeys anyways, unless you're a religious fanatic, in which case I probably don't want to hear from you because you're a crazy person, but also I don't judge. I mean, I'm famous for shitting on myself. So pick whatever color you want. If you ever message me, just sign it at the bottom. Be like, by the way, green monkey. By the way, translucent monkey. I don't give a shit what color you are. I don't care. I don't care what color you pick. Just be something monkey unless you think the earth is flat and then be flat monkey. I don't give a fuck. You, you know what? It doesn't even have to be a color. You could be whatever you want. You could be disco monkey. I don't give a fuck. I'm white monkey. I'm supreme ruler. Not because I'm white because I'm the one talking into the microphone and you're the ones listening. Therefore, I'm in charge unless you turn it off, in which case I guess you actually have the power, but don't turn it off because like I said, I'm the supreme ruler and I said you have to listen to it. <clears throat> Anyways, on with the fucking show. So I've been in about Australia for a month now, and uh, one of the things I missed most from Canada is the weed culture. I know it sounds weird. Like I don't do drugs. I'll pass any drug test you want to throw at me, which is it, which might surprise you because of some of the sh- things I've done. Uh, you, you, you'd think I'd have to be fucked on something, but I promise you there's probably only like four episodes where I've been slightly drunk and it's only because we were drunk and we're like, hey, let's let's do something stupid. And I'm like, I have a very good place to do that stupidity. It's called YouTube. So most of the time you ever see me, I'm completely dead sober, but though I do miss the weed culture in Canada, which is weird because like there's pot shops everywhere in Canada. Like there's, I don't know where you're from, but there's, I mean, if you're in America, you're probably, you're like, yeah, I know that's just how it is. But in Canada, weed is completely illegal. It's like shooting a guy in the face with less jail time. There's no way around it unless you have a card and you have to go through hoops and talk to doctors and lawyers to get a fucking medical pot card or you could just talk to Steve on the corner and he'll give you probably better shit. But weed is super illegal in Canada, but it's fucking everywhere. I lived in the gay district at Church and Wellesley downtown Toronto where it was world pride like three years ago. And if you ever I mean, not not that we're homophobic. I love everybody. I don't give a fuck as long as you're nice. But if you're a homophobic person, stay the fuck away from downtown Toronto in June and July because they celebrate the fuck out of gay pride and it is the best fucking time you'll ever have in your life unless you're an asshole. I walk through my neighborhood. I I lived. If you Google gay district in Canada, you'll get church in Wellesley. I lived. I could hold my breath and run to that fucking intersection. And when I it's when it's gay pride, I have the best fucking time. There's tits and dicks out everywhere. No one gives a fuck. Laws don't exist. It's like that movie where they just go around and kill people for like that 24 hour span of like once a year, like purge or whatever the fuck it is when they're just oh, by the way, no laws for some reason. I don't understand that movie. I never actually saw it. I just know the concept, but for some reason they get rid of all the laws in this movie and they go around and just murder and rape and loot shit. I don't know why. But for gay pride, it's kind of the same thing. You can do drugs. They don't give a fuck. You can drink in the street. They shut everything down. The whole downtown core is shut down for these 
parades full of naked old dudes with their dicks hanging out and hot. I've seen the hottest girl I've ever seen in my life fully naked just walking around and I'm like, okay, well, thank you because you know you're hot and you're doing this for everyone to make up for the old man dicks. I appreciate you. Come home with me. Pride is a fucking trip if you ever walk around. No one gives a fuck down there. There's prime minister. We have a prime minister in Canada. The prime minister, he's like the president. He was floating around in a bright pink shirt on a float surrounded by old dudes, dicks hanging out with leather strap, like everyone's in a bondage, leather strap, choker necklaces with spikes coming out and the fucking weird like hats, you know, like those weird fucking bondage hats where it's like a leather conductor's cap with a front little tiny brim that doesn't actually do anything. And for some reason, if you wear that, you like to get fucked in the ass with a baseball bat. They are just surrounding this guy and everyone is so full of love. It's the best fucking time. They had world pride about three years ago and it was the Olympics of dick sucking. It was huge. Thousands of people from all around the world flew in just to walk up and down this one street, which I didn't understand, but also it's a good time. And you're probably not there for the street. You're probably there to meet people on the street and then fuck them somewhere. And I happen to live nearby, so I heard a lot of men fucking other men. I didn't hear much lesbianisms, but I'm pretty sure they're just more quiet than the aggressive fucking steroid junkies. Gay dudes are fucking massive, man. I don't know if I mean, I'm sure it's a sexual thing. They want to be like a big dude and they want to have muscles just like any normal straight dude. But when there's two jack dudes and they want to fuck each other and you can tell they are like boyfriends and they're just monsters. You can't be homophobic around them. You're the bitch. These gay dudes checkmated every homophobe in the fucking world. You walk through the street and you feel like all oh, these fucking faggots. Guess what? Bruno and Bruce are going to beat the fuck out of you and then they're going to absolutely rape you and no one's going to do anything because you're the asshole. You're the one who went. Oh, you're a faggot with your fucking choker. Guess what, baby? Now you're the faggot because you have two dicks inside you and I stand by it. I've never raped a man nor have I ever been raped by a man, but if I saw two dudes raping a man and they're like, who's the faggot now? I'd be like, oh, that motherfucker had it coming. So just don't be homophobic. Don't be an asshole. Just you know, let people fuck who and what they want unless they're kids or animals or actually no you can fuck inanimate objects if you want to fuck a coaster wrap it up around your dick like a burrito I don't give a fuck I don't want to watch you I might watch a little bit if it's some fucked up shit who gives a fuck I'll watch it I like a lot of fucked up things not sexually I'm pretty vanilla you know sometimes I just want to have a nice lady we don't need to talk about that just don't be a dick I lived in the gay district for about six years and it was the best fucking time of my life because when I had a girlfriend there which I don't anymore because she left doesn't matter. We had a great. I didn't have to worry about her getting raped. I worried more so about me getting raped, but then I'm like, eh, they're probably not going to do that. I was more concerned about like some dude coming in my food and like winking at me after like a gay waiter. I'm like, oh, hey, you look nice, even though I don't. I, uh, I you wanted the eggs Benedict. That's not cream on top. That is actually my spunk. Enjoy. And here's my phone number. Never happened, but I wish it had just for the sake of the story. But also I'm glad it didn't because then I would have tasted two people's cum. That might sound out of context. I drank my own cum one time. Whatever. It's on my Instagram. But so I mean, I can't really hide from it. That was the weirdest promotion for my Instagram when I was when I released the unreleased. I, I had a video where I drank my own jizz. Let's just put it fucking out there. And when it got taken down by YouTube, obviously I got a channel strike when I when it got taken down. I just sat on. I'm like, I'm torn because I put this video up and I well, obviously I shot it, edited blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, mm, but now the me drinking my cum is off the Internet. So it's not it was bittersweet because my my work was taken down, but also the video proof of me drinking cum was off the internet. So I, I kind of just sat back and was like, well, well, it is what it is. Fuck it. And then I had this great idea to re-release it a year later, which was actually like a month ago, re-release it on my Instagram for some fucking reason. I don't know why I, I thought it would just be a fun little thing to be like, fuck you to YouTube. I put out a video where my friend Jeff Abel watched the video next to me and I kind of talked about it, explaining what the whole story of how it got taken down and everything. And Jeff Bell's losing his fucking mind. It's on my YouTube channel. You can find it. So I bring back this whole me drinking cum thing. And then I obviously, if I make a video, I promote it. So if anyone had forgotten, I drank my cum a year ago. 
also all the new fans that had come had arrived, I guess is a better way arrived in that year who didn't even know about it. I'm promoting the absolute fuck out of it in a main channel video all over my personal and Simon Christopher show Facebook page promoting the absolute shit out of it. Not once, not twice, three times because I put out three chunks on Instagram because it was a two something minute video. You can only put out one minute on Instagram, so I had to chunk this fucking video up and promote three different times of me drinking my own cum of this thing that got taken out on YouTube, which was a blessing in disguise, but I thought fuck it. I'll embarrass myself in front of thousands more people than I did the first time and I'll make sure my family remembers all of it and I'll put it back out and everyone can watch me drink my jizz and I did that and the second I was done with it, I fucking regretted everything, but I promoted the absolute shit out of it because I'm an idiot. So everyone saw me drink jizz twice and I actually zoomed in on my face when I did the shot. I came in a shot glass. Who hasn't? I zoomed in on it in the video for Instagram when there's a stringy little rope of cum going down my chin and I slow motioned it because I thought it was funny because there's two sides to my brain. There's the talent side quote unquote talent side and there's the producer side and the talent side was like I don't want anyone to see this fucking video ever again, but the producer side's like yeah, but it could be a good boost for your Instagram. So fuck it. Let's promote the shit out of it. Do it in three chunks and make sure everyone fucking hears about it. Make a big video for your main channel and no one will ever forget you did it now. Fuck boy. So that's a thing I deal with. I it keeps me up at night. I woke up crying three nights ago going everyone knows I drank my jizz. They're good. to think I'm a gay, but like I said, I don't give a fuck. I, I, I like gay people. I lived with them for six fucking years in an 11 story apartment building. I was the middle cube of the Hollywood squares of dick sucking. I heard gay sex everywhere during world pride. I lived in a fucking Beyonce concert for a whole week. No complaints. My only complaint was the amount of people because like I said, I live there. That's my home. I have to go to work. I have to go to the grocery store. So when I had to go through the grocery store and get to work, I had to go through thousands of naked dudes trying to touch my dick. They didn't actually try to touch my dick. I just assume gay people. I mean, I've never had a bad encounter with a gay man. I've kissed many of them. I've kissed a couple dudes. I don't give a fuck what any of you think. And uh, you know, it's kind of like a girl with a with a bit of a bristly mustache. The last dude I kissed and this is not me coming out. I promise you. I, I mean, not that it matters, but I'm a straight dude, but the last dude I kissed was a, he kissed me while I was sleeping which sounds rapey, but I promise you it was on stage at a comedy show and I last minute before it was like a sketch show. So there's these three people doing little like eulogies for this dead person and it, that was the comedy bit. Each person told a story that was funny and blah, 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 but there's no dead person through all the rehearsals. They never thought to have a dead person. They were just going to talk to these three chairs lined up like and pretend it was a coffin. So last minute before we do this live show, like fuck all the rehearsals and, and we never talked about it when we're backstage at this com comedy club called Comedy Bar in downtown Toronto. I'm like, hey, man, I go to the guy who's organizing the show. I'm like, hey, man, it's kind of weird that they're just talking to chairs. I think we need a dead guy. And he goes, you couldn't have said something months ago. They're going up in 30 seconds. What the fuck do you want? And I said, I mean, I'll be the dead dude. It just seems weird that they're just sitting there talking to a fucking row of chairs. So he's like, if you want to do it, do it. But here's the deal. You can't break. You can't laugh. You can't fucking you can't smile. You can't open your eyes. You have to be a corpse on these tables. And I said, not laughing will be easy because these guys aren't fucking funny. And it, that was fucking real rude, but also really funny. They looked at me like dicks and also they looked at me like challenge accepted. So I go on stage. Lights are pitch fucking black. I lay down on these three, four chairs. My feet are dangling because I'm six foot four and they only had like three feet of chairs, but whatever. I'm a dead guy. Dead guys sometimes limp off chairs and these guys row up behind me. The audience is beside me. The lights come up. I'm sitting there in my head. I'm just thinking about grandma's pussy. Try not to listen to any of their jokes, not listen to any any of them like kind of riffing and trying to make me laugh because they were obviously trying to make me laugh once they said 
Once it, they heard the teacher say, oh, yeah, you can go out there. Just don't laugh. They're like, oh, if Simon's going out there, we're for sure going to make him laugh. So they tried and they didn't. I won. But there's three dudes. The first two, I they did the script, which I had heard a fucking dozen times. So like no surprises there. And the third dude, who was one of my best friends, also a black man, not that it matters. He leaned over before he started talking. So there's the second dude finished talking and then there's a pause. a silent pause. My eyes are closed. It's pitch black or pretty fucking dark. And all I feel is these fucking big, beautiful black lips on mine. And he kissed me while I was sleeping in front of a fucking full house crowd. And he tried to break me and I didn't fucking move. You know why? Because I commit to the goddamn bit. I'm a goddamn professional and I can proudly say the last dude I ever kissed was a black dude while I was pretending to be dead. How many of you motherfuckers can say that? Anyways, back to the weed culture. The thing I miss about weed culture is all like it's all the dispensaries and it's I don't I, I never went to them, but the weird thing it's weird that dispensaries exist even though weed is so fucking illegal in Canada. It's there's no like I said, there's no laws saying you can do it unless you have this medical card. So there's all these stores blatantly like pot shop, like in full fucking letters, weed stores, bong shops with big weed leaf logos like they're not being subtle at all. Usually back in the day, if you want to buy drugs in a store, it would be like a nail salon with a biker working the cash desk and you'd be like, oh, this is the right place to be for what I want. I'm going to go talk to the biker man and hopefully he doesn't follow me home and kill my family. But with weed shops, it's just blatantly obvious where the weed stores are. You walk in, you show them your ID, which is weird. I mean, I guess it's like buying. Let's call it. It's like buying cigarettes or booze. You got to be of age, apparently. So you go in, you show them your ID. I went to one dispensary because I didn't believe they existed. People are saying you can just buy weed like they're fucking candy. I'm like, that sounds like a thing that'll be shut down forever. So me being the asshole I am, I go in and I show them my ID and I'm like, okay, let me in and they go in. My friend was buying some weed, whatever. Uh, They have a prescription, so there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, If anyone's listening that uh, cares. So we go to this little weed store and there's jars, not only jars, there's fucking buckets of different types of weed different names. They're all stupid names. They don't name weed anything like normal. There's no like branding. There's no brand name weed. There's no Adidas strain or I'm sure there is, but it's all just like different colors of Kush or like crack baby or or Trump's balls. It's just dumb shit names and you're just like, oh, I mean, I'll have I'll have two grams of Trump balls, please. And they're like, okay, it's forty dollars because it's a dispensary and they're fucking crooks. So you just go in there and you buy all these weed and they they act like they're at like a, a craft beer store. Like they know the flavors, the side effects, the, the what it'll do to you. Oh, you want to be more creative and just think outside the box and go and write poetry in the park. This is the one you want. Bigfoot's cock. That's you want two grams of Bigfoot's cock. That'll inspire the living dick out of you. Put that in your back pocket, my man. Go write me some poetry. Let me know. Send me your blog links and I'll be like, yes, the Bigfoot's cock did that. And you can just go into these fucking places, show them an ID, buy it like you would buy beer or cigarettes and no one gives a fuck. They just put it in a little bag and you leave and that's it. That's so fucking it's crazy to me. You can't do that with any other drug. There's no other drug on the planet where you can go like, so I want to I want to see fucking purple rainbows raping David Bowie's corpse. Can you give me like some strong acid, but also something that'll keep my mind fluid and also aware I might, I might have to drive home in a couple hours high as shit. I don't want to run off the road thinking I'm on a dirt bike in the middle of the desert racing through a crowd of people like I'm in fucking Paris that I don't know if is an accurate statement or a terribly offensive statement. I don't know my geography or my news. I don't follow politics. I don't want to make I want to make sure I don't fucking run into a crowd of unicorns humping David Bowie's corpse. I don't know why I love David Bowie. I don't know why I'm making fun of his dead body. I wish he was still alive, but you can't do that with other drugs. There's no other drugs where you can get a little card like at a brewery where it's like, oh, well, this hoppy flavor has a, an aroma of black currants and berries. There's no acid black currants. There's no fucking ecstasy aromas. It's only weed for some reason, and it's weird to me 
Maybe it's not weird to you. I don't understand. There's I know stoners in college and they were a degree like they were a sheet of paper away from being a botanist. They could grow any kind of weed in any environment. Like if it's winter outside, they know where to put it inside to get the right light. They know the type of lights you'd need, the fluorescent bulbs and shit, which ones are good, which ones are bad, which kind of soil, which way to angle it in the sun. Like they study the shit out of it and they also fail out of college. They just need college programs for stoners to be botanists. I mean, they have botany programs, if that's even the right term, but they need to like focus one on weed, especially since it's going to be so popular now and legalized. It's legalized in a couple places in America. Obviously, Amsterdam. Canada's toying with the idea. Apparently, I don't know if this is bullshit or not, but they were going on about how they wanted to legalize it on 420, which Justin Trudeau, our prime minister, who you can love or hate, he's a fucking... He's done some shit I don't understand. I'll get into that in a second. But he, I don't, apparently he came out saying he wanted to legalize weed on 420 and he's the type of motherfucker who would do it. He used to smoke a bunch of weed. He probably still does. I thought he was cool. He apparently like a couple months ago, everyone started hating on him because he gave this ISIS dude $10 million because the Canadian government was mean to the ISIS guy. Like Justin Trudeau is the most left uh, fucking feminine. I mean, not shitting on him or, or the left or the feminist, but he's very left, very feminist, very pro feelings. There's some video going around on the internet where he was talking to a woman at some town hall meeting and she said mankind and he interrupted her and said people kind, which I would have said humankind, even though that's what mankind is short for. It's not man as in man and woman as man is in short for human. Humankind is what mankind means. But for some reason, neither of those two fucking idiots knew it. So he interrupted and said people kind and everyone's like, oh, you're a fucking asshole. You're an idiot because you interrupted a woman to be a feminist as a man mansplaining all of those shitty terms thrown at his face. And then he comes out saying, oh, I was just joking. I regret making a bad joke. You're the fucking prime minister at a town hall meeting being a professional town hall meeting prime minister. You're not doing some off the cuff thing on a, in a crowd. Someone came up through the camera like TMZ style was like, oh, hey, by the way, mankind's fucked. And then you made a joke. You were representing your country at this meeting and you interrupted a woman to be a fucking idiot. And anyways, I'm sure he knows about it. He apologized saying I made a bad joke. Mm-hmm, idiot. So apparently he wants to legalize weed on 420, which I think is fucking hilarious and not only hilarious, but that would boost the fucking Canadian economy so much that I mean, I'm super pro weed legalization because of that. Like the first week Denver legalized it, Denver, Colorado, 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 they made millions of dollars in tax revenue. I mean, I don't want to get too serious on this. I'm just saying make weed legal, make money. I mean, take money out of the drug dealers hands. No one thinks about the drug dealers anyways. They're crooks anyways. Fuck them. If you're going to rob me, you know, you did, I've never been robbed by a drug dealer, but I mean, they're 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 fucking criminals, man. Why? Fuck it. You want to you want to win the drug war? Sell the same shit, but better and for cheaper. If you want to if Pepsi wants to take out Coca-Cola, you just steal the Coca-Cola recipe and make it fucking cheaper. That's all you do. Be like, hey, Pepsi makes Coke now, but we don't call it Coke. We call it Pepsi Cola Co or something that sounds more better that I can't think of. We make that now. It tastes just like Coke. Do the whole Pepsi challenge thing. People like I literally think this is the same thing in two different glasses. Which one and be like, well, this one's Coke and it's two bucks a can or whatever. And this one is Pepsi's version of Coke. We call it something clever. I can't think of and it's only a dollar a can and be like, um, goodbye, Coca-Cola. Goodbye. So governments all around the world, if you want to win the drug war, don't fucking try to take out the criminals because you won't. You won't do it. You've been trying forever. Ain't going to happen. Just sell better shit for less fucking money. Everyone will come to you. You can make all the fucking tax revenue, make millions of dollars and everyone fucking wins. Just do that. Sell cocaine in the purest fucking form for 20 bucks a gram, and you will never have another Mexican cartel chopping some motherfucker's head off because you're the fucking government and they're a fucking cartel. Just do what they're doing, but better and cheaper, and you win. And we all win. You make more money. And then we can buy cocaine and get fucking doped up. But they're not. They're only going to legalize weed, which is fine. 
I don't mind legalizing weed because I know enough stoners being because in fucking Canada, weed is like beer. It's just fucking everywhere. You walk down the right streets or even the wrong streets and you just smell weed. You don't smell trees. You don't smell exhaust. You don't smell people. You smell weed. It's just fucking everywhere. And guess what? I've never had a problem with a stone person. I've been in lots of scraps with drunk people. Being a bartender, I've had a lot of asshole drunk people coming up and talking to me. Never a bad stoner. They're like, hey, man, can I get some fucking Doritos? Sorry, man, I don't have any Doritos. Oh, that's cool, man. Have a good one. That's the worst experience I've ever had with the stoner. They're fine. The stoner march, the whatever fucking 420 march, there's thousands of people in Dundas Square, downtown Toronto, which is like Canada's little Times Square wannabe. There's thousands of people freely smoking weed in the downtown core of Toronto. No problems. There's no, I mean, there's police, but there's no need for police. They just stand there. There's a comedy show on this massive stage downtown. There's no fucking problems. Everyone's just smoking weed, listening to music, walking around, being like, hey, we're not assholes. Legalize weed. And everyone's like, we will one day, but we can't. Instead, go get go get drunk on this shit where we make a lot of tax revenue, get in some bar fights, get kicked out, DUIs, kill a family in a car accident. Do that shit instead, but don't just stand around having a good time eating Doritos and smoking weed because it's a plant and we can't tax it. Oh, go kill a fucking family in a car accident because you're drunk. Oh, do that instead. Oh. I've never seen a crowd as big as the 420 March without any problems ever. They don't exist. If you have over 200 people in a group, even if they're all on the same team, like a sporting event, motherfuckers win the Super Bowl and they're flipping cars to celebrate, to celebrate their team's victory. They go downtown their own town that they live in, that they're celebrating their team and they flip random fuckers cars over and go, yay, they won the game. They won the game, flip the fucking car, break into the store, ruin their economy, light shit on fire. Yay, they won the game. That wouldn't happen if you just crop dusted those motherfuckers with weed. If every one of the people in Philadelphia when this shit happened or Vancouver was a big one a couple years ago when they won the Stanley Cup or, or whatever the fuck they won. If you just crop dusted that shit, no cars would be flipped over. They would knock politely on the window of convenience stores, line up in single file, smoking their weed outside, and they'd go inside out one at a time, and they'd buy the shit, and they'd leave, and you'd go home with a bunch of money as a convenience store dude instead of having a car flip through your fucking window because everyone's a drunk idiot because the team won. They won the game. Crop dust. That should be a new branch of the government. Any crowds like fuck tear gas, fuck police with the riot gear and the tanks. Just get a crop duster. They're cheap as fuck. Get some farmer fucking pilot dude like the one in Independence Day. He was like a retired jaded vet and he's an alcoholic and he flew up into the fucking UFO and he blew it up and he saved the world. Get some motherfucker like that crop dust up and down the fucking streets and everyone will just slow down. They'll just slow the fuck down. No riots, no fist fights, Doritos. That's all you need. Just crop dust bitches. And you can even make it sponsored. You can write, you can get one of those skywriters to write the brand of weed or the, the fucking dispensary name over the, the crowd. And then the smoke will just fall on them. And you'll be like, hey, fucking Steve Bud's shop. Oh, uh, and that stuff's good. Let's get some cush from Steve's Bud shop. Think about it. It's advertising and it's riot prevention. I am solving the world's problems on this fucking podcast, everyone. I don't feel like I'm getting enough respect. I'm running for prime minister of Canada or being that I'm in Australia, I'm going to run for whatever Australian pr prime minister president. I'm going to run shit here in Australia one day and I'm going to make weed legal because they don't have any guns here anyways because they're fucking smart. Now, I'm not getting into guns at all whatever. They don't have guns here and there's been no shootings. That's all I'm saying. So it's safe. And I mean, as long as you can fucking throw a punch, you're probably a 50 50 chance of not getting fucking killed here. They just need to crop dust fucking everyone. Those fucking Antifa Nazi regime battles that they have all over the Internet, which are so funny to watch. You have these white supremacist Nazis who want to fucking kill everyone or, uh, you know, allegedly maybe they don't. 
And then you have these Antifa people who also want to fucking kill everybody and you have them together out of spite. Like if one has a rally, the other one shows up and then when they have a rally, they show up to like rebuttal them and then they just fucking try to kill each other. Like the Antifa people, I saw this video where they like were handing out knives to other Antifa people and then try to lure them into a parking lot. Like these Antifa people are fucking potential murderers to kill the Nazis and these Nazis are going, we're not Nazis. We're just... We're, we're just we just like being white, man. Uh, that's what the Hitler said. But also, whatever, man. I mean, be proud of who you are, I guess. Just don't kill people. But then they riot and they walk around with pitchforks lit on fire. And you're like, mm, this is some Frankenstein shit. You're going to kill the monster. And the monster's name's Antifa. And Antifa's handing out switchblades to kill you. Let's watch. Pay-per-view that shit. And then crop dust it with weed when it gets too fucked up. Once a car gets flipped... Bring in the weed. But until then, sit back, bitches, and let's just fucking watch. I just want to... I wish they would live stream Antifa Nazi battles. I would watch it more than I would watch UFC. And I fucking love the UFC, but they don't allow switchblades and guns. So as long as I can watch it from afar, I'm not going to those fucking rallies ever. But I love the YouTube videos. I'm just watching these people going, no, you're an asshole. No, you're racist. No, why am I racist? You're the one... And just fucking stab each other. Just fucking kill each other and get this shit over with. I can't be fucked to hear to your reasons. I don't care about your political stance. Just fucking fight each other. <laughs> oh, man. I've been, I've, I've been fucking rambling off track. One of my favorite things with the weed culture is how I don't. Okay. I don't know if you guys do this. If you smoke weed, you probably have at least seen this. I know a lot of people who, for some reason, like to blow weed smoke in their dog's face and get their dog high. And for some reason, they think it's the funniest fucking thing in the world, which is not. If you're blowing weed smoke in your dog's face, you're an asshole because all that it does. Okay. You're a stoner, right? And you're smoking weed and you're like, oh, Rufus is here. Hey, Rufus, come here, boy. Come here, boy. Come in. Come here, boy. And he comes over because he's a dog and he loves you and he trusts you. And you go, hey, Rufus. And you grab his little fucking collar and you just super his fucking face. You blow billows of weed smoke in his face. And you think it's fucking hilarious. You go, oh, look at, look, look at Rufus. He's just, he's so fucked up, man. He's just laying there. Oh, look, he's eating his food. Oh, man, we got him so fucking high. Rufus is fucked. That's what dogs do. Dogs sit and they sleep and they fucking eat. That's what dogs do. They might shit in the backyard and you got to pick it up. But that's what dogs do. You just made him do it slower, I guess, really. You just made him. You wasted your weed to make a dog do dog things and then laugh at him for doing dog things because you're high too and you're an idiot. Because guess what? You're laughing at him for sitting down, sleeping, and eating food and looking like an idiot dog. That's what you look like. That's every stoner. Stoners sit on their couch, they eat Doritos, and they don't do shit. You're the dog. You're the stone dog. And everyone looks at you like you're a stone dog. You're the fucking idiot for blowing weed smoke in your dog's face, laughing at him for being stupid. That's how we feel about you. You don't do anything. I know there's a lot of stoners who listen to this. And I'm sure they're very productive people. I'm talking about the stoners who sit on the couch, eat Doritos, have pimples all over their face, order a pizza, eat the whole fucking thing. Don't do anything. Just wake up, smoke weed, wake and bake, smoke weed all day, work at McDonald's, go home, smoke weed, play video games, go to bed, do the same thing. Don't do anything. Those people are the people I'm making fun of. If you smoke weed and you do shit, cool, man. That's fine. I'm so pro weed being legal for people like you because you do shit. Some of my favorite comedians are high as fuck all the time, and they're funny as shit. I'm not saying all stoners are dumb. I'm saying stoners who blow weed smoke in their dog's face and then laugh at them for being sleepy and hungry. Those people are fucking idiots. If you're going to give your dog drugs, don't waste weed on it. Give your dog some real fucking drugs, my man. Put on a fucking show. Give your dog some drugs that aren't going to make him be a lazy food eating piece of shit and do something that, you know, is going to benefit you a little bit. You don't want to watch a dog just lay on the floor and fucking eat dried shit food and sleep. Give your dog some fucking real drugs. Like I want to give a dog a bunch of acid one day and just chase him around the house with a vacuum cleaner and blow his fucking mind. That would be way more fun 
than giving him a little bit of weed and watching him lay down. I want to make this dog lose his fucking mind thinking he's chasing kittens in the clouds, not knowing where the fuck he is. I want him to look at you like you're Dracula, like you're fucking a vampire, and he's not even going to know what a vampire is. He just saw it on TV because you were watching Dracula one day, and it's stuck in his little brain, and then when you bring in the acid, it unleashes that little deep-seated thing he saw one day, and now you're that. Now you're Dracula to your dog, and he doesn't know if he should be afraid. He doesn't think you're going to kill him and suck his blood. You just look with slick back hair, your fangs, your long cape thing that looks really stupid. I don't know why all vampires wear capes. I guess it's kind of like some weird like, uh, I'm going to kill you because of, like Jack the Ripper shit. Like, uh, I'm going to kill you because I have a cape on. But also Batman has a cape and he doesn't kill anybody. I, he might have killed one person. I'm not sure. I don't read the comic books. I just Googled it one time. He might have killed somebody. I'll fact check it later. But also, hey, I'm not going to. So I think you should just give dogs real drugs and you can buy them because drugs are easy. At any given point, you're within 10 minutes of actual drugs. I'm just saying if I went outside and all the lights went out at night and the only lights that went on were places with heroin, I would for sure see a light on. I would know that there's heroin there because there's heroin fucking everywhere. It's everywhere. You don't understand it because you're not in the heroin world, but I promise you, if you were, you would be like, oh yeah, you know, we, should, we ran out of heroin. I know a guy five minutes from here is fine. They're, it's everywhere. Drugs are fucking crazy, but also don't do them. But you should totally let your dogs do them. Give your dog acid, chase them with a vacuum cleaner, make them think you're Dracula, and just see what happens, man. He'll probably have PTSD and just shake in the corner for the next seven hours because his mind's fucking blown because his little dog brain can't compute why you're Dracula and you have rainbows coming out of your fucking ears. But also, he doesn't know that that's weird. He might just be like, well, I've never met this motherfucker. Let me sniff him. Let me just sniff this rainbow eared motherfucker and he might like you. He might like you more. He might be terrified. He might growl. He might bite your face, but he also might not know where your face is because your face has seven faces because you, he's on acid because you gave your dog acid. That'll fuck with his brain. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know how to handle that shit. Same with weed. He doesn't know why he's so hungry. He's just going <coughs> to eat until he pukes, but don't give your dog drugs unless they're real drugs. Don't give them heroin either. That'll probably kill them. Don't inject your dogs with heroin. Don't blow weed smoke in their face. Do give them acid because acid people say acid expands their mind. Who knows what a dog will do? He could turn into a fucking genius. He might be the best fucking dog fucking service guide dog ever. What's a dog really going to do if you break his brain with some acid like, oh, now Rufus can't do my taxes. Oh, now I have to learn how to do my taxes. Now Rufus can't write the prologue to my next novel because he's all fucked up. Oh, Rufus, you druggy dog piece of shit. You fucked up my literary career. Now I can't have my book on Amazon for the no one to read it. You could probably train the shit out of a dog if you just gave him a couple of drugs, man. I've always want I don't ever want an animal, but I've always wanted a dog for one reason, and it's because I wanted to train a dog to nod when I nod. Like if I just like well, I mean, you can't see me, but if I just like nod, like turn my head down, like, hmm? yeah, like I want to make him do that back at me. So if I nod at him, he nods at me. And that way, when I have to make an important decision, I look at him for reassurance and go, hmm, and he goes, huh? and I go sign the contract. I will take that lease on this car. I can't afford because Rufus over here gave me the seal of approval. The Rufus seal of go ahead. I'm a dog making your financial decisions. That's why I want a dog, because that way I can just blame it on him. And if I get fucked financially, like I can't afford this new Subaru. But sir, you signed the contract. Rufus told me to. Who's Rufus? You're my dog. Your dog told you to sign the contract. Yeah, I trained him to nod when it, when I nod at him, he nods back. Well, maybe you shouldn't have done that. You're right. I'm gonna put Rufus to sleep, and then you kill your fucking dog. But maybe he makes some. Good, maybe he, he if I asked him to, if I should invest in Bitcoin, he would have nodded and then be like, mm, that's a, that was a great decision. That was a great fucking decision, Rufus. I invested in Bitcoin two years ago. I made $75,000. We're going to doggy Disneyland. We're going to take you for all you can eat steak for the rest of your fucking life, dog, because I made money on Bitcoin. I don't have any Bitcoin, but if I did, I would suck my own dick. I want to know what would happen if you did give a dog like acid. It might, it might change him fucking forever. It might be fine, but I get, you, can't, you can't do animal testing anymore because everyone's a fucking touchy shit. We can't test these drugs on 
dogs who really don't matter if you kill a, I mean, if a dog die, you can't murder a dog. But if you hit a dog with a car, nothing's going to happen to you. you. You might feel bad. You have to apologize. You might just run away. I mean, it's not a hit and run murder. If you just hit a dog, kill it and run away. Fuck it. It's a dog. They don't have sin numbers. They're not real people. But for some reason, we can't do drug testing on them. Okay, let's give the drugs to the people, the human people with, you know, potential and brain power and can understand math and can drive cars. Let's give them some fucking drugs that we don't know what will happen. They just see what happens. Let's just do that instead because that's less inhumane. Let's just fuck with these people because the people are going to do these drug sample testings probably aren't really doctors or anything. They're probably just pieces of shit who want drug money. Fuck them. They want drugs and money. Let's give them drugs and money. And then we can make a bunch of money with the drugs we gave them because we'll know it won't kill them. It might make them twitch, but then we'll just go back to the formula and take the things that make them twitch, give it to some other fucking crackheads, see how they do. If there's no twitch and their hair grows in thicker, who gives a fuck about what happens in five years? Maybe they'll try to bite their own ear off in a mental institution strapped down to a board in a room with blue pads on the wall. But that's fine because by then we'll be millionaires. As long as they don't twitch in the next two months, we'll be fucking rich. That's the more humane. That's what they want to do instead of giving Viagra to a dog, which I don't see a problem with unless their little heart explodes, which it might, or they get a raging boner. But who gives a fuck? They get boners in public anyways all the time. And you know what they do? They sit down and they suck themselves off. So why not give them a drug-induced self-blowjob session? Whatever, man. Just give them a little bit of Viagra. If a person needs one pill, give them a quarter. See what happens. If nothing, up the dosage. It's fine. Animal testing's fine. Just don't do, like, weird shit. You don't want to do weird shit with animal testing. Like, they do a lot of things with monkeys, which is weird because they're so close to humans. We're, like, 1% away from chimp DNA, and we're so fucking far above them. But for some reason, because we're so close, you can't do things like test makeup on them. You can't go in and put like mascara on a little monkey because it's inhumane. How good would an Instagram account be if they just had animal testing like makeup on little chimps in a fucking in a fucking lab and like, well, hashtag mascara, hashtag chim chim. That would blow the fuck up. That's the best marketing you could ever have. That's my next. That's my next passion project. I'm going to find little animal testing makeup champ pictures and I'm going to make an Instagram account and I'm going to tag the companies who did it and people will probably get mad but I'm also doing it because it's fucking hilarious and I'm probably not going to do it but if you do it give me the password to the account and I'll help just get it started we can do this my monkey friends my little white purple rainbow monkey friends it is kind of fucked up that they put like makeup on chimps because they're so close, man. They have arms and thumbs and they could do like sign language and you're sitting there getting them all dolled up with eyelash shit and like plump red lipstick. It's weird. Like what kind of sick fuck was like, okay, we can put this makeup on this rabbit and see what happens. No, let's dress up Jim Jim. I've always wanted to see Chim Chim with some nice red ruby lipstick and some mascara. Maybe a blonde wig and a cocktail dress. Let's fuck Chim Chim. That's getting a little weird. But I feel like there's some guy at one point who was like, yeah, I know monkeys, they're really close to people, right? If we get them dolled up and we get them all fully dragged out, like if we turn this monkey into a transgendered drag queen monkey, and I have a bottle of tequila in my desk and weird things happen after hours, it's understandable because I thought it was just a midget, a really furry midget. I can't be held accountable. Hey, man, you can't put makeup on these monkeys, put a dress on them and a wig and then give me a bottle of tequila and make me stay here after I'm supposed to leave anyways and could have fully left because I had nothing else to do and the job was done, but I stayed here until 10 p.m. because I want to have some alone time with the dolled up monkey. You can't blame me for maybe fucking the monkey. That's the conversation that happened when they started animal testing on monkeys. And I feel like maybe there's some legitimacy to not testing on monkeys because they're fucking smart and adorable. And I love monkeys because we're all monkeys. You my white monkey friends or my brown monkey, my whatever color monkeys you want. 
any word you want. I think that's what we established. You could be any word. You, you could be Taco Bell monkey. I don't give a fuck. But we're all monkeys, so I understand why they don't want to put weird drugs on them or inject them with shit and fuck them up because that's what happened with Planet of the Apes, I think. I haven't seen the movie. If you give some monkeys drugs, they could have their brains just explode with intelligence and then they're the fucking people in charge and we're the fucking monkeys. I don't want that to happen. I like looking at them from afar in the wild, not in a zoo. Fuck all that zoo shit. Fuck SeaWorld, obviously. Fuck zoos, obviously. We don't want animals in zoos. That's like going to prison. That's an old cliche. I'm not saying anything new. I don't like zoos. I like seeing them in the wild. I'd rather watch a YouTube video of a lion or a monkey or a gorilla in the wild than see them in a fucking basement dungeon pit in a zoo in real life. I would be happy never seeing a gorilla ever in real life Hopefully, never in the wild, for fuck sure, never in the wild, but definitely not in the zoo. I don't want to see him in a zoo because it's mean. I want to pet them. I want to sit with, like, what's that one in the sign language with Robin Williams before he hung himself while he was jerking off? I'm pretty sure he was jerking off and he, with a belt around his neck and he died. I'm pretty sure that's what happened because he, he, he wasn't, I mean, yeah, he was depressed, all that shit, but he was in a great mood. People saw him like 10 minutes before he left and he was like in a great mood. He had Mrs. Doubtfire 2 on the way, all this shit. Oh, I'm going to get a coffee, Robin. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Cool. I think I can rub one out in 10 minutes. See you in a bit. What'd you just say, Robin? Nothing. Have fun with the coffee. And then 10 minutes later, they come back and he's fucking dead with a belt around his neck. Pretty sure cock in hand, but they wouldn't put that out on the internet or in the news. They wouldn't want some comedian iconic guy being like, yeah, well, Robin, uh, yeah, he's dead now. Uh, he was jerking it and he fucking choked himself to death. No, they're going to make it seem like it's a depression thing, which they should. I mean, yeah, if I died with my dick in my hand, I wouldn't want people to know about it, even though they all would, because even if I died in like a car accident, People would be like, yeah, Simon died jerking off in a car. People just expect that shit from me. I'm usually jerking. I'm ju- I've rubbed two out during this podcast already. You might have heard me pause. I'm a silent comer. I just go. I just came back on topic. Don't put makeup on monkeys. Don't have ball tequilas. Don't stay late after work hours because some weird shit happens. I'm pretty sure some dude fucked a monkey one day. And that's why they don't do it anymore. They're like, "Mm, if this gets out, man, our whole lab is fucked. We get funding from the fucking government. If they find out that we rape monkeys and dress them in drag and then get drunk with them, you gave Chim Chim tequila, asshole. They're going to do a blood test on this fucking corpse monkey and they're going to find tequila in the system. And we all know you have a fucking problem, George. We all know you're the one with the fucking problem, George. You shouldn't have put makeup on him and got drunk after hours, George. You fucking idiot. Now the government's going to know we fucked the monkeys. We can't fuck the monkeys. Who's going to fuck us now, George? That's what's going to happen. That's a real conversation that happened. That was an audio clip from the security cameras. That really happened. George is now in a dumpster somewhere lit on fire because he fuck it. That's what happens when you fuck with government funding, man. If you fuck with the Clinton Foundation, you get fucking put in a dumpster and lit on fire. That's what they fucking do. Anyways, we're not talking politics. We're talking about fucking chimps, not fucking chimps, sex with chimps. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't test shit on monkeys, even though I think you should rather than humans, because in Australia, I don't know. Maybe it's because there's no weed here, but there's a massive fucking meth problem. And like I said, I live with some meth addicts previously, which I thought I would have talked about by now, but we'll get there. There's a massive meth problem in Australia, and it's weird because I go on the internet to look for jobs and shit because I'm new here. I don't I don't have a job, obviously. So I'm on these websites looking for jobs, and every fucking day, there's this company posting this new shit on human testing, and I'm not making this shit up. It's like, if you're in good health, kind of, and need money, which you all do, and don't mind taking some random drugs that don't even have names. They're just a series of numbers and letters, like a URL for a website that doesn't fucking exist. Hey, take these letter number drugs and we'll give you 500 bucks a day. No, not even. It's like 500 bucks for like five days. And if you stay there for 20 days, you get like three grand. And a lot of people are like, I like meth. I like drugs. If these guys will take me and give me free drugs and give me free Wi-Fi and make me sleep in this nice room, I don't have to sleep outside on the street begging people for money, sucking dick for crack, sucking dick for meth. I can just go and get paid to get free drugs and then I can get out and I'll have a lot of money for real drugs. I'm going to do that. And there's these job postings from this one company every fucking day. And I actually thought about it. I thought about signing up for this website, one for the story, 
two just for the the quick fucking money and also a place to live with free Wi-Fi. I mean, who the fuck would say no to that? I actually looked into it and I was like, mm, they could give me some shit. I don't want. I didn't want to get. I mean, I might not be the smartest dude out there. I might not be the funniest dude out there, but if I get random drugs pumped into my fucking body, I'm only going to be less smart and less funny. There's no way they're going to be like, oh, yeah, Mr. Tattoos, Mr. Shit himself on the Internet. Let's give you the fucking pill that makes you you twice as smart so that you can figure out more ways to do dumb shit on the fucking Internet. No, they're going to be like, okay. Yeah, okay. So Simon. Yeah, okay. We Googled you. We saw you put fireworks in your fucking ears. We're going to give you these drugs that actually killed spiders, but we're going to see how they do on you. Hopefully they won't kill you. I mean, spiders don't have much of an immune system and also they're tiny and they can't handle all these drugs and there's 17 syringes, but we're going to give them to you because you're six foot four and you put fucking fireworks in your ears and you shit on yourself and you fucking you put an electric taser lighter on your nipples and we think you can handle AZ3821B. We think you can handle it. We're going to inject you. In fact, we've already injected you. You might feel a little sleepy. Your dick might explode from a rush of blood. We don't know what's going to happen, really. But in a couple of weeks, we'll give you some money if, if you're still alive. And I thought about doing it. And then I thought, mm, I'd rather start a podcast. That seems a lot more fun. I can just rant and rave about whatever I want. I don't have to talk about the random shit drugs I did. Although I think it would be pretty good for an episode if I did one of these things. But also, I know I would get something stupid like, oh, you, you, you got the new kind of hair dye. Oh, I mean, I don't want to dye my hair, but now it's brown. I have brown. Hey, guys, I did a drug sample testing thing. I got paid 200 bucks to dye my hair brown, and now my scalp burns for three days. And I'm pretty sure this dandruff isn't dandruff. It's just my head falling off. But I got 200 bucks, guys. That's not a good episode, but this one was. I hope this one was good. That's round two in the bank, bitches. Round three's coming next week. Subscribe on iTunes. Go to my Instagram, The Simon Christopher Show. Everything's The Simon Christopher Show. I like to make it simple for everyone. Not that you're stupid. It's just easier for me. I can just be like, whatever you ask me, what it is, I'm just like Simon Christopher Show. Instagram, Simon Christopher Show. Website, Simon Christopher Show. Whatever you need, the podcast, Simon Christopher Show. The only thing that isn't is my Twitter, but I don't give a fuck about Twitter. I don't give a fuck about Snapchat. Instagram, podcast, YouTube, Facebook, I guess, kind of, is also the Simon Christopher Show, so I'll throw that one out there. Search it. Find it. Follow me. You'll find out when the next episode's out. Peace out, motherfuckers. Round three's coming soon.